singing. How about this? Oh, we had some pretty fast classes here. I think the court gestures have won again. They are fantastic. Well, today we have the creature feature. I've got a few clues for you about what animal. It's a mammal. It's found in more places around the world than any other mammal. It barks. Oh, we have some smart ones here. What did you say? A dog, excellent. You're right, it wags its tail when it's happy. So you already know what it is. You said dog. Raise your hand if you have a dog. Whoa, we have a lot of dog owners here. Well, today's creature feature Oh, I think I had a group towards the back here that was very quick 
And it was whoop, this group, the Stallions. Well done. Well, we're talking today about a special type of dog called a fox. Did you know that they are members of the dog kind? Dogs are known as canines. Now, we want to show a gray fox. There he is. An arctic fox. Yes. And a phonetic fox. Whoa. Oh, I think I had a group in the back this time. And not, no. Uh, the dragon chest. Very well done. So, but today we're going to focus on the red fox. We're going to see some of the red fox's features. This small animal is characterized having pointy ears, a long, narrow snout, and long, thin legs, and a really, really bushy tail. This is extra helpful for the fox for a multiple of reasons. Here's the fox with his tail. How many of you like to play in the snow and come back in later for some hot chocolate and snuggle up with a nice warm blanket? I know I do. Well, if it's a cold place, the fox uses his tail like a blankie. It's bushy and it has also is hard for predators to get a hold of it because it slips out of their mouth with all that hair. No one likes all this hair in their mouth, so he gets away. Okay, knights and ladies, I need you to take a really big sniff. That wasn't really big, that was a rather small sniff. Let's try a big sniff. Ready? Sniff! Oh, excellent, that was a good sniff. Good show. Did you guys smell anything? Hopefully not, me neither. Did you know the red fox has a way better smell, a sense of smell than we do? It can smell as far as six miles. Six miles. My goodness. That's like from here to Chick-fil-A in Manteca, the most noble of chicken places. Now, look at the fox ears. They also have incredible hearing. They can hear a mouse squeak from over a hundred feet away. It's like me standing over here and hearing a mouse step on a cotton ball in the back of church. It's incredible. I must turn my parchment over. Take a second to look into your neighbor's eyes what shape is the pupil? The black part, what shape is it? Is it like a triangle? Round, 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 yes, round. Oh, I think I have a class over here that did exceptionally well this time. Let's see, that would be the knights. Yes, the knights, well played knights. Okay, well the foxes, like other, unlike humans, have a vertical slit pupil, like cats. This oddly shaped pupil allows the foxes to see really well in dim lighting, which is perfect for red foxes are mostly nocturnal. That means they like to run around at night and sleep during the day. It sounds kind of fun, doesn't it? Perhaps. Well, this is Willy the fox. Foxes like our animal pal Willy are really interesting creatures. Willy reminds us that he, just like he is tricky, there's a trickster out there, the ultimate trickster. He's the leader of the bad kingdom. And he tricked the first people, Adam and Eve. And he wants to trick us too. But we need to trust in God who put the whole armor of God upon us. And now, thank you for the creature feature moment, I believe the drama pe portion of our show.
Princess, whatever is the matter? I, I don't know. I just started crying for no reason. <laughs> what should we do? <laughs> hey, is that, is that an onion? Princess, were you eating this before you started crying? Yes. No wonder you're crying. Onions can make people cry. Oh, really? I didn't know. I've never taken a bite out of one before. I was so hungry, you see, so I went to the kitchens for a snack, but Cook was gone, and all I could find was this onion, and I thought if I used my imagination and pretended really hard that it tasted like an apple, it would taste like an apple, but then I started crying, and I didn't know why I was crying, and I thought I must be sad about something, because people cry when they're sad, but I didn't know what I was sad about, and that made me cry even harder. Then you came, and who are you? I'm Albert. Albert, that's a nice name. I'm Gwendolyn, Princess Gwendolyn. Princess, do you remember what I told you about pretending? Yes. <clears throat> pretending is fun, but don't take it too far. Take care, or you could wind up with a scar. Her imagination is a little bizarre. See, I got the scar on my chin because I was pretending to be like Jack and the Beanstalk. I imagined that I had my own special beans that I planted, and they sprouted and grew into a giant beanstalk. Only it was really just the old oak tree in the garden. And I climbed up, up, up the beanstalk, but then I fell down all the way, and I hit, hit the ground very hard and scraped up my hands and my knees, and I hit my head on a sharp, and I hit my chin on a sharp rock. After that, Bella and my father told me I mustn't get carried away when I'm imagining things, or I could really hurt myself. Wow. In case you hadn't noticed, the princess has quite the imagination. What kinds of things do you like pretending, Albert? Um, well, I've always imagined what it'd be like to be a knight of a square table. That's why I came here. I just arrived today, and Bella is a lot fought and her giggles more are training me. Guess you could check save a damn self to stress off your list, huh, Albert? Sometimes I like to pretend, pretend I'm a knight. I'm imagining I'm charging in a battle on my horse or fighting a fearsome dragon. But then I usually end up breaking something, like that one time I was running through the Great Hall and knocked over a vase and broke it. The last one has already given me my first sword fighting lessons. You taught me some of the basics. I wish I could learn how to use a sword. Hmm, I should know. But speaking of that, Albert, you have to get back to your training. I should like to introduce him to my father first. It wouldn't take long. I'm not so sure, your highness. The king is a very busy man. The king? He wouldn't mind, especially because Albert helped me. I think he'd want to meet him. I'll go get him. You okay there, Albert? There's white as a sheet. I think you mean white as a sheet. Hello, anybody home? This is really happening? Can I get the king? Now listen, don't forget to bow and call him your majesty. You gotta make a good impression. Hey. Don't make him more nervous than he already is. Just be yourself, Albert. Come and meet us outside afterwards. Okay, I will. Father, this is This is the boy I wanted you to meet, Albert. Oh dear, Albert, Albert, wake up! Oh, oh, your, your majesty, I'm sorry, your majesty. It's a pleasure to meet you, young man. You may rise. I was crying when Bella, Sir laughs a lot, Sir giggles more, and Albert found me. I was crying because I was because of the onion, and Albert helped me stop crying. Gwendolyn, what am I going to do with you? I've been eating raw onions again? Oh, man. Thank you for helping my very imaginative daughter. Albert is training to become a knight of your square table, Father. He just arrived at the castle today. Ah, well, you are most welcome here. Knighthood is a very high calling. I rely upon my knights to help me with many, many things, to protect the kingdom, to stand for truth. May you train well and prove yourself worthy. Thank you, Your Majesty. Will Bella and Sir Laughs-a-Lot and Sir Gigglesmore be training you? Yep. 
I had my first lesson today. Well, you couldn't be trained by better people. I look forward to seeing what God does in your life. And now I must return to my duties. There is much to do, and I am a very busy man. Daughter, in two days' time, we ride to a nearby village to help resolve a conflict and disagreement between noblemen. Off with you now, and no more eating raw onions. <laughs> yes, Father. I'll never make that mistake again. I'm still very hungry, though. I think I'll go see if Cook is back with any real apples. Can you find your way back outside all right, Albert? I think so. Okay. I'll see you later, then. Bye. Hello there. Oh, hello, Your Grace. The princess is a delightful young lady, isn't she? So charming and creative. You could say that. I was just happening to be passing by, and I saw you with the king. Yes, Your Grace. Princess Gwendolyn wanted to introduce me. On my very first day, too. How exciting. It was very thoughtful of him to take time out of his busy day to meet you. Yes, it was. He's very busy, though. It sounds like he has a long journey planned soon. What is that so? Did he say where he was going? And when? He said he was going to a village to settle a disagreement of some sort in a couple of days. Hmm. I wonder which village. Albert? You think he could find out for me? Mm, I don't know. Oh, that's all right. I was just wondering. I'm playing a special banquet for the king and all the nobles. If I knew where the king was going, then I'd know how far away it is, and when he'll be back, and then I'll know what day to plan the night with. That makes sense. I could ask the princess and let you know. Oh, thank you, Albert. If you do this for me, I won't forget. Thank you, Your Grace. Bella, Sir Lafflot, Sir Giggles more, I'm back. Oh, it's just me, George. How are you, boy? Hey, Albert, I'm back. How'd it go with the king? Were you nervous? Hey, that reminds me of another joke. Which of the king's knights never doubted himself? Certain, you know, like certain, certain. I think Albert and George have had enough of your jokes for one day. Hmm, you're probably right. I need some new material. Hey, maybe Sir Lobslaw can help. I have something for you, Albert. You've dreamed your whole life of becoming a knight, but more important than becoming a knight is becoming a child of God. Now, a knight needs his armor. Well, there's another kind of armor that God gives his children to wear. It's invisible, but it's just as real. The first piece of that spiritual armor is the belt of truth. Here. When you wear this belt, let it be a physical reminder to you of the spiritual armor given from God to his children. The belt of truth helps us to be people who tell the truth, just like God does. Stand therefore, having fastened on the belt of truth with unshakable faith in God and in his word. Thank you, Bella. I will treasure it always. But Bella, how do I become God's child? Let's sit down. There are two kingdoms, the good and the bad kingdom. The good kingdom is God's, and the bad kingdom is Satan's. When we're born, we're born into the bad kingdom. From our childhood, we disobey God's commands. That's sin. Sin is what separates us from God, from his good kingdom. But God sent his son, Jesus, as a perfect substitute for our sins. Jesus lived a perfect life. He died in our place and then rose from the dead so that we can be forgiven and be part of God's kingdom as children of God. We just need to admit that we've sinned and that we need Jesus, and then we can receive God's forgiveness. If you do this, Albert, God will make you his child and give you the special armor to wear so you can have unshakable faith and stand strong against evil. I see. I have a lot to think about after today. Yeah. But as you think about things, make sure you're studying the book of truth. That's right. The special copy you gave me. I left it on the bench. Did you see it? I, I haven't seen it since I gave it to you. Go. Oh. Hello, Bella. Hello, Robert. 
Don't worry, George. I didn't forget about you. You want a treat? You want it? I can't find it anywhere. What are you looking for, Albert? The Book of Truth Bella gave me. I left it here earlier, but it's gone. I've got to find it. Wait. Wait up, Albert. I can help. Albert, Albert, Albert. Let's think about this. Have you tried retracing your steps? we are. <laughs> well, I sure hope Albert finds the book of truth. Before I get to today's team cheer contest, I would like to announce yesterday's quiet fox winners. The Black Knights and the Purple Court Gestures. Yes, you tied for first place. Good job. Now, tomorrow will be dress-up day. Any medieval attire works. So you could be a princess, a knight, maybe a dragon or even a castle, but please leave your weapons alone. No swords, javelins, maces, trebuchets, tanks, jeeps, fighter aircraft, or the such. Um, if you do bring those, your teacher may have to hold them aside, or we'll keep them in the castle armory until the day is over. Okay, thank you for understanding. Are you ready for today for the cool contest? We need our judges. Where are our judges? Judges? <laughs> Oh, yes, we have Sir Michael the Magnificent. Yes, we have Teresa the Tireless Teacher, Caroline the Songbird Maiden, and Kevin the Klutz. <laughs> yeah, please pass these, Kevin. These are scorecards now. Time for your time. Cheer. Let's start in the back. How about the dragons? What have you got? Dragons? Excellent. A panel of judges. Let's see the scores. Your score, Mr. Michael. Your score. Thank you. Okay. Master Klutzworth, would you keep the score? <laughs> okay. How about over here? The Giants. Let's go, Giants. <laughs> Turn back to zero now, please. Well, we just need... I believe that was 12. Giants, please. appreciated the part where Jesus was on my side. Yes. What have we got? Oh, yes. What's a 13? Okay. Excellent. Let's move over here to the knights. You what? Perhaps your teacher could help you. Knights, are you ready? Short and sweet. I like it very much. Voters, please. No napping on the podium. Okay. What have we got? Ten. Ten. Okay. Excellent. Good score. We're up to the stallions. Yes, the stallions.
Whoa, excellent job. Let's see the scores. 17, we have a new record. Excellent, good work. Where are we? The Royals. The Royals, okay. Ready, Ro Royals? was quite excellent. Scores, please. A five, a five. Sir Michael, you should be ashamed of thyself. <laughs> so what did we have at 17? So we have a tie. Okay, good job, good job. Okay, where are we? The nobles, the nobles. Are we ready in the nobles? You love me. That's uh, a three. That's because you're old. <laughs> What's 13? I think it's a bit of a jip, but that's what the judges say. Where are we? We did, we, did, we did the royals, the jugglers, I believe. Nice. For a young group, they did exceptionally well, wouldn't you say? A four? A three? Sir Michael? A four? And a three. What have we got? Fourteen. I was never very good at math. Okay. Where are we? The troubadours. The troubadours. Are we ready? This young class really has it going on. Four, 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 and... Four! Okay. Even I can do that simple math. It's 16. Where are we? The jesters, have you had a turn? Okay, jesters. <laughs> nice laugh at the end. I really enjoyed it so much. This is a young group, so be generous. Thank you. 14, excellent score. And now, the youngest group in here, the town criers. Have we got anything, criers? Okay, it's your turn. Bring it. <laughs> One, two, three. Attack! Attack! Oh! <laughs> Woo! Most excellent. Scores, please. Scores. Napeth not. <laughs> what have we got here? Ten. Seventeen! They tied for first place. Excellent, excellent. We're going to do a song. Okay, I believe we're ready for a song, fair maidens. We need to pick it up because we're running a bit behind. One song. No? No song. Straight to the announcements. Okay. Quiet, Fox. Oh, there was no doubt about it. This group back here was entire. The stallions were really galloping fast. Okay. Since we're running a little late, we don't have time for another song. We'll go straight to the announcements. Please stay where you are until you are picked up. Your crafts are on the table in the fellowship hall. 
And for tomorrow, remember to dress up for something medieval if you're able. Oh, and if, also if you're able, please bring some money for Pastor Jude's VBS in the Philippines. Thank you all for coming. And let's have a word of prayer and then we'll be dismissed, okay? Let's be quiet. We're going to pray. Dear Lord, we thank you again for this great day that we could have together and just uh, the fellowship we got to have and the fun and the laughter, Lord. We know that you have created all these things for us to enjoy and we're just so grateful. Be with us this day. Bring us back tomorrow. And all these things we pray in Jesus' name. Amen.